Shenley Laboratories, producer of Penicillin Shenley and Shenley Pharmaceuticals, presents the Encore Theater. The Encore Theater play tonight, Nurse Edith Cavell. Our star is Ida Lupino. Tonight, Shenley Laboratories presents another in a series of great dramatic programs. Some of our stories are fact, the struggles and accomplishments of great men of medicine. Others are fiction, stories of devotion to an ideal, individual heroism or courage. By these programs, Shenley Laboratories would remind you that medical science and progress is not cold, impersonal research or pages of statistics, but a warm, human story told in living terms whether it's the life of one of medicine's immortals or the everyday record of service rendered by your own physician. And now, Nurse Edith Cavill, starring Ida Lupino in the title role. It was morning when the German columns marched into Brussels that unforgettable August of 1914. They got no welcome. The stores and windows were shuttered by command of the Burgermeister. Behind drawn curtains, the people waited the order of the conqueror. The ordinances will be published for everyone to read. Some of our people are very poor and can't read. Your people need a lesson. They need discipline. We are a free people. We don't respond very readily to discipline. I don't like your tone. I am sorry. You must change it. You have a great influence in this city. Show a spirit of cooperation and acceptance of the new regime and the people will follow you. How little you understand them. The moment I do that, my influence, as you call it, would disappear. They would pass me by in the streets as they do you here, Captain, without seeming to realize that I existed. I think they will realize that I exist. That will be all. Who's next, orderly? Fraulein Edith Cavill. Here is your card, sir. Hmm. British subject, qualified nurse. London trained, arrived Belgium. Appointed head of the Birkendale Medical. Converted August 14 to military ambulance 53. You're a British subject, Fräulein. Why have you remained in Brussels? I have work to do here. We are converted into a military hospital. For Belgian soldiers? For the wounded. Any wounded? Yes. You would nurse Germans? Of course. Hmm. We will take over your home as a German military hospital. You will be permitted to remain in control. Very well. You will receive instructions concerning the transfer at our convenience. Here is your identification card. You will not leave Belgium without my permission. That will be all. Good afternoon, Madame Rapport. Miss Cavill, you're not doing your own shopping. Oh, yes, we're shorthanded now that the German and French nurses have left us. Well, I'll have Philip carry your basket back for you. Thank you. Any news of Jean? Oh, I'm so afraid he's been captured. And they say they're shooting all the prisoners. Oh, you you mustn't believe all the gossip you hear. Why, I can't believe... Grandmother! Jean! They're after me. I saw them coming down the street. Don't, Don't let them get me. Quick. Get into the back of your quarters. Hurry. Come on, Jean. Hurry. Into a closet for the moment. I... I'm afraid I... Ich nicht uh, sprechen Deutsch. English? Yes. Who lives here? Madame Rapard. Uh, She's not very well. Her heart, you see. She's rather elderly. If there are any questions I can answer... We are building troops. How many can she take here? I believe four. Four. They will be here within the hour. Very well. Good day, Fräulein. Madame Rapport. Jean. My dear, you heard they're billeting troops here. What are we to do? They're sure to find him. Well, keep him here till tonight. Then I'll take him to the home. Get out some old clothes and have them ready for me when I come. I'll be here directly after curfew. (laughs) 
this wire. Refugee prisoners are reported to have escaped from internment camps in the Mons area, probably seeking refuge in Brussels. Captain Heinrich, she will take the necessary steps to apprehend all refugee soldiers and advise the civil population of the penalty of harboring them. I will, Excellency. The Belgians do not approve of our being here, Heinrich. No, Excellency. But it's time to learn how a country should be run. Anyone who harbors a refugee soldier will provoke the severest penalties. Madame Moulin. Good heavens, Nurse Cavill. What brings you down to the waterfront? May we talk quietly. It's very urgent. We are just getting our barrels onto the barge. We'll be gone by midnight. You remember Madame Rapard? Of course. She has the bakery shop and the two grandsons. Yes, that's right. Well, the elder Jean was taken prisoner. Oh. But escaped and made his way across country to home. I hid him for a day in the hospital. How on earth did you manage that with the Germans underfoot all the time? Well, there are two cellars in the hospital with a small door between. Oh. I pushed a big wardrobe in front of that door. You'd never know it was there. But I must get him out now. And I wondered if you'd help me. How? By hiding him on your barge. Then getting him across the frontier into Holland. Would you do that? Of course I would. Bring him down after dark tonight, and we'll hide him in a big barrel. We'll have him safely in Holland in no time at all. I'll tell you, Edith, it was the most shocking thing I've ever witnessed. Because the soldiers were in civilian clothes, they lined them up, shot them as spies, in my very own courtyard. It's horrible. I never thought I'd live to see such things. You should come out in the country and see for yourself. They're hiding everywhere, in barns and ditches. Most of them wounded and sick. If you go to the far side of the woods beyond our castle, you can hear them moaning and crying for help. Oh, he's safe. Jean is safe in Holland. Look, I've just had this card. Oh, I'm so happy, Madame Rapport. Oh, God bless you. God bless you for saving my boy. Thank heaven that one is safe. But there are so many that need saving. Yes. Yes, well, let us talk about that. The three of us and Madame Moulin. Perhaps something can be done for them, too. If we could get some of them here to the hospital... That would be very dangerous for you, Edith. But how could we do it? Of course, there's the ambulance. Yes, but how are we going to get it here? Our driver was called up a week ago, and I don't know that I can trust the new boy. Well, I've never driven an ambulance, but I don't see why this isn't a good time to learn. You will hide them in the same cellar where my boy was? Yes. When would you like to go? What better time is there than the present? This foot is infected. I must treat it at once. All three of them are unconscious now. They're so noisy. Are you sure they can't be heard upstairs in the hospital? I'm afraid so. I have to go out for some dressings, try and keep them as quiet as possible. You know, I can't believe we've actually got them here. And for the life of me, I don't know how we did it. Oh, me, driving that ambulance like it was a sewing machine. And Madame Ripard, fainting every time a German came near us. It was a lucky thing, too, that there was no one at the back entrance when we arrived. You're making more noise than they are. Oh, I do rattle on sometimes, don't I? I'll get the bandages and medicine. Oh, there you are, matron. What on earth are you doing to that old wardrobe? Why, nothing, Sister Watkins. I was just pushing it back against the wall. It was out too far. Someone would be falling over it. We've been looking all over for you, matron. The officer said it was urgent. Officer? Yes, it's a German officer. He's in your sitting room. Very well, sister. I'll go at once. Fräulein Gavel. Yes? I am Dr. Gunther of the German Medical Corps. Yes. We are transferring the first contingent of our wounded here today. You will remove all civilian patients to their own houses. And any Belgian, French, or British wounded will be handed over to the German authorities. Yes, Doctor. I understand. are you looking for, my friend? A safe road and a quick journey. For how many? Three tonight, seven on Monday. Here is a pack of playing cards. You will find the identification card you require in among them. Thank you.
you have the identifications ready, Countess? Yes. They were able to use the photographs off the men's army identification cards. Good. Can the barge start tomorrow, Madame Moulin? Whenever you wish, Miss Cavill. Tomorrow, then. Madame Moulin, are the guides arranged? All arranged. Francois will guide them to the barge. All is well. Yes. Yes, all is well. <laughs> Captain Heinrich. Yes, Excellency? You are head of the counter-espionage service here in Brussels, are you not? Yes, sir. Take a look at this map. You see that? Every one of our positions indicated. I'm convinced there's an organization here. This map is clear proof. Unravel it. You'll get to the heart of the organization. I have an idea. It's only an idea. But let me try it. There's a, a Belgian refugee waiting to see you in your sitting room. Oh, thank you. I'll go right in. Uh, you're sure he's a Belgian refugee? He is dressed as one. May I go in with you, Edith? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Yes. What is it, please? Nurse Cavill. I have escaped from a German prison camp. What is your nationality? French. From which prison camp did you escape? Weininger. Mm. Well, what can I do for you? Well, help me to get out of Belgium and back to France so I can rejoin my uh, regiment. I see. Countess, will you please get Captain Heinrichs on the phone? Oh, with pleasure. Captain Heinrichs, headquarters, please. Why are you calling him? Hello. Captain Heinrichs, please. Miss Cavill. Oh, here, read it. He'll be right on. Hello, Captain Heinrichs. I have a man here in the hospital who says he's an escaped prisoner of war, and I wish to hand him over to you. Oh, no, no, he can't escape. As you know, the hospital is well guarded. Yes, very well, goodbye. Why did you do that? I'm sorry. You came to the wrong place. I must ask you to remain in this room. You'd be very foolish to try and escape. Come along, Countess. Oh, look on his face. How did you know he was a German spy? My dear, the same way you did. <laughs> when you were in school and when I was, Weininger was pronounced with a W and not with a V, except by the Germans. <laughs> Captain Heinrich will be very disappointed when he sees the pigeon he has bagged. One thing we know now, though, Edith. They're watching us. And they couldn't pick a worse time. We have 11 in the cellar. Shall these be the last? No. No, as long as we're alive, we must help to the extent of our powers. As long as we can save men's lives. Whether it is by wit or by medical aid, we shall continue to do it. A doctor or a nurse or a sincere patriot like you, my friend, learns to have a great respect for the value of the human life. Yes, if you and I died tonight, we would know that over a hundred live because of our efforts. We will go on, Edith. Yes. Yes, we will go on. In a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we will return to our play, Nurse Edith Cavill. At this time, we bring you a message of importance from Shenley Laboratories. Today, with many parts of the world suffering from famine conditions, penicillin, the drug known as the saver of human lives, is now bringing a new benefit to mankind through its use in maintaining the health of domestic animals as well as human beings. By combating disease in animals, penicillin helps to increase the amount of meat, milk, and other foods so vital today in the face of the world food shortage. These new uses for penicillin demand a large supply. And among the firms contributing to that supply is Shenley Laboratories. Because of its extensive background of research in mold and fermentation processes, Shenley was particularly well fitted to play a part in the development of penicillin and allied products. Shenley Pharmaceuticals developed to date include penicillin tablets and trochees for administration by mouth and penicillin ointments for local application upon your physician's prescription. In producing these, it has been the aim of Shenley Laboratories to contribute all within its power to the cause of man's well-being. This will continue to be our goal. We are now turning our resources and facilities toward perfecting other types of pharmaceuticals so that your doctor may have more and better weapons with which to fight disease. Now, back to our play, Nurse Edith Cavill, 
starring Ida Lupino in the title role. And so the days passed with a handful of valiant women defying the mighty German war machine. A nurse, a countess, an elderly French woman, and a younger one who operated a barge with her husband. Night after night, the ambulance came ricketing to a stop, and the men were smuggled into the cellar. A few days later, when they were able to travel, with infinite courage and wise planning, they were taken out of danger on the barge. And then, one day... He's terribly wounded in the head, Nurse Cavill. If something isn't done quickly, I think he'll die. You say he's British? Yes. I'll get the ambulance to wait for you outside the back door, Edith. Thank you. How far out of the city? About 25 miles. He crashed in the woods. I see. That's quite a way. But we shall manage. We searched the whole wood, but we could find no trace of him. He's got to be found, do you hear? Offer a reward, 500 francs, for any information leading to his arrest, dead or alive. Search every hospital and instruct all doctors and officers to report any unusual cases. Yes, sir. Shall I interview Dr. Gunther first? Where is Gunther? At 149 Rue de la Culture. Let me see. That's the nursing home run by... The, the... Englishwoman, Cavill. Cavill, eh? I think I'll go to see Nurse Cavill myself. Well, you've seen the entire hospital, Captain Heinrichs, from the attic to the boiler rooms. May I ask now what is the occasion for such an extensive search? A number of escaped prisoners are making their way out of the country. You understand it is our duty to put a stop to this. It would be a most serious matter for those who engage in this traffic if they should be caught. Whether they are men or women, they would incur the severest penalties. Whether they are men or women, Miss Cavill, it is our duty. It is your duty. You all know the routine now. You follow your guides as far as Moline, where you will be transferred to another agent. You all have your information cards right, and your 25 francs. Well, Godspeed. Follow the guide's instructions and you'll soon be safe. Uh, Lieutenant Wilson, give England my love. Miss Cavill, I can never thank you enough for hauling me out of that plane. And but Well, I've been wondering, what would they do if they found out you'd help me? I mean, oughtn't you to hand me over to them now that I'm all right again? Do you think I've nursed you back to life to have you shot? You must want to go home yourself. A nurse has no home. But still, among foreigners... There's only one human race, my dear. But I hate the idea of your staying out here. They might turn round on you. Yes, but if I ran away, I should turn round on myself and on my profession, which is to stay where I'm needed most. That would be far worse... Well, well, we've got to get you all out of here or you'll miss the barge. Good luck, and God take you safely home. Countess Mavot? Yes, Captain Heyricks? You are under arrest. Under what? You are under arrest. How dare you? I demand... You're under arrest for helping derelict soldiers to escape. You will come with us, please, Madame Rapard. Take your hands off me. You're under arrest. Madame Moulin, I arrest you for aiding derelict soldiers to escape. Nurse Cavill, I arrest you for harboring derelict soldiers. I call the woman Edith Cavell. You are Edith Cavell, English woman? Yes. You made a statement to the police. Is that your signature? It is. The contents of the statement are true. So far as I know, I made my statement in French. It was taken down in German. As far as I know, that is my statement. But I cannot speak German. You're not suggesting that it has been distorted? I'm suggesting nothing. Is it not a fact that between November 1914 and July of this year... You gave shelter in your house to certain French 
English and Belgian soldiers? Yes. One of them was an English airman? Yes. When they came to you, were they disguised in civilian clothes? Generally. But you knew them all to be fugitive soldiers? Certainly. You gave them shelter, provided them with money, and the means of reaching the frontier? I admit that. Were you yourself the head of the organization? I did what I thought was right. Why did you think it right to break the law? Because the men were in danger of their lives. You would have shot them as spies. And they were spies. I did not say they were spies. They were not spies. I said that if you had caught them, you would have treated them as spies. You were aware that they were men of military age? Presumably, as they were soldiers. We have heard the admission of the accused. Could it be doubted that this organization was a premeditated conspiracy to undermine the German authority? These people have put in danger the lives and probably caused the deaths of brave German soldiers in the front line by the breach of law. The head of this organization was unquestionably the woman Cavell. It would be said that she was a nurse. To make use of her calling as a cloak for recruiting soldiers to the enemy was, we insist, the gross abuse of a noble profession. Against the woman Cavell, I demand a penalty of death. Let this court put itself in the position of this woman, dedicated as she had been throughout her life to the service of the helpless, and ask themselves what they would have done. Her only motive in acting as she had done was to save men whom she believed to be in danger and help them to escape of the country. She never for a moment had it in her mind to do an injury to Germany. I deny the right to any tribunal of war to condemn a nurse to death, the life of that woman belongs to the sick and the wounded. The lives that many German soldiers owe to their skill in the early days of the war forbid the shedding of her blood by the German authorities. If what she has done was deserving of punishment, the tension during the duration of the war is the maximum they should inflict. <laughs> Nurse Cable, do you wish to add anything further to what has been said on your behalf? Thank you, Your Excellency. I have nothing further to say. How many soldiers did you assist in leaving the country? About 200. You were aware that in thus recruiting these men, you were injuring Germany and benefiting the enemy? I thought nothing of benefiting or injuring any country. I thought only of helping the men. Did you know that the offense was punishable with death? I did. The case is then closed. Sentence will be discussed and put to work. Nurse Cabell, it is my duty to inform you that you have been sentenced to death. When? At dawn. I will leave you with your chaplain. seems so useless. I have so much to do before my work is finished. The new institute, the nurse's rest house. It is God's will. God's will. Sometimes so difficult to comprehend. But always he is weaving a pattern of immortality. That's what my mother would say if she were here. Would you see that a message reaches her that I am quite happy to die for my country? But I don't regret for a moment what I have done. As she lives at Norwich, one of my nurses will give you the address. I will attend to it. Miss Cavell, why don't you make a personal appeal for reprieve? Oh, no. It would be useless. Look. Already the sky is lightning. Please, uh, send my Bible to my mother. You see, it has my date of birth in it. Well, it's time now for another entry. Uh, may I trouble you for that pen, chaplain? Thank you. Died October 12th, 1915. 7 a.m. German time. My child. Oh, I have no fear nor shrinking, chaplain. No, I've seen death so often that it isn't strange or fearful to me. But this I do say, 
standing as I do before God in eternity, I realize that patriotism is not enough. I must have no hatred, no bitterness towards anyone. They are coming. Yes, they are coming. Today in Westminster Abbey to pay tribute to the memory of Edith Cavill brought home to rest. The earth of her beloved England will be richer when it receives her mortal remains. The kingdom of God is richer since it received her unquenchable spirit. will bring back our star, Ida Lupino. But first, may we leave this thought with you. One of the most notable facts about the practice of medicine is that one doctor's discovery in the field has always become almost immediately the property of all who devote themselves to the cause of healing. Shenley Laboratories pays tribute through this series of programs dedicated to the medical profession to this unselfish, progressive ideal. We of Shenley Laboratories feel that physicians everywhere may well take pride in a spirit of sharing for the greatest good of the greatest number. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the star of tonight's play, Nurse Edith Cavill, Ida Lupino. To sum up the spirit of the Shenley Laboratories program, this simple and beautiful prayer of the physician, written centuries ago by Maimonides, seems to me apt and fitting. The eternal providence has appointed me to watch over the life and death of all thy creatures. May I always see in the patient a fellow creature in pain. Grant me strength and opportunity always to extend the domain of my craft. This is the prayer of the physician. It is ages old, yet today it is as new as the hope for a peaceful way of life for all the world. May we invite you to listen again next week at the same time when Shenley Laboratories presents Disputed Passage, starring Dennis O'Keefe and Hume Cronin, two great stars in a great story. Thank you, and good night. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time when Shenley Laboratories presents Disputed Passage, starring Dennis O'Keefe and Hume Cronin. And listen, to for some of the greatest radio news to come your way in a long time. It's big news, exciting news. So listen closely next week. Nurse Edith Cavill was produced and directed by Bill Lawrence and was presented through the courtesy of RKO Radio Pictures, producers of Notorious, starring Ingrid Bergman and Cary Grant. It was a Gene Holloway adaptation. Ida Lupino can soon be seen in the Warner Brothers production, The Man I Love. This is Frank Graham speaking for Shanley Laboratories, producers 